Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. We welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning's Bhagavatam class, we will be covering three verses. Chimar Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 7, 20 through 22. And the topic is the son of, sorry, the son of Drona punished. Uh, and the class will be given by His Holiness Chandramani Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. I guess I'm ready to go. Yes, Maharaj. Please, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, my obeisance is to all of you. Ato paspristya shalilam sandade tad samahitaha ajanan apisamharam Prana Kritstra Upastite. Translation. Since his life was in danger, he touched water and sanctity and concentrated upon the chanting of the hymns for throwing nuclear weapons, although he did not know how to withdraw such weapons. Purport, the subtle form of material activities are finer than grosser methods of material manipulation. Such subtle forms of material activities are affected through purification of sound. The same method is adopted here by the chanting hymns to act as nuclear weapons. That's all I see. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the verse, Maharaj. Do you want to go to the next one, Maharaj? Or would you like to yeah. do it first? Okay. No, keep going. Tata pradas kritam te ja pachadam sarvato visham prana padam abhikspreksya vishnum vishjiksnur uvachaha. Translation thereupon, a glaring light spread in all directions. It was so fierce that Arjuna thought his own life in danger, and so he began to address Lord Sri Krishna. Arjuna Vacha Krishna Krishna Mahabaho Bhaktana Mabhyan Kara Tvam Leko Dhyama Mananam Apavargo Sri Sam Sri Arjuna said, O oh my Lord Sri Krishna, you are the almighty personality of Godhead. There is no limit to your different energies. Therefore, only you are competent to instill fearlessness in the hearts of your devotees. Everyone in the flames of material miseries can find the path of liberation in you only. Report. Arjuna was aware of the transcendental qualities of Lord Sri Krishna as he had already experienced them during the Kurukshetra war, in which both of them were present. Therefore, Arjuna's version of Lord Krishna is authoritative. Krishna is almighty and especially the cause of fearlessness for the devotees. The devotee of the Lord is always fearless because of the protection given by the Lord. Material existence is something like a blazing fire in the parts which can be extinguished by the mercy of, the, of Lord Sri Krishna. The spiritual master is the mercy representative, representative of the Lord. Therefore, a person burning in the flames of material existence may receive the rains of mercy of the Lord through the transparent medium of the self-realized spiritual master. The spiritual master by his words can penetrate into the heart of the suffering person and inject knowledge transcendental, which alone can extinguish the fire of material existence. Om again to Miranda Syagina Jana Silakaya Chaksu Militamyena Tasmay Shri Divina Baha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vidam Puswami Tamine Namaste Saras Vati Deve Gonga Mani Pachari Nini Vishisha Sunyavari Pasya Yade Satari Nibanchi Kalpa to Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pavitya Patita Nam Bhavani Bhil Vaishnavi Bhil Namaha Jai Sri Krishna
ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀವೈಟಗಿನಾಥ ಶಿವಾಸರಿ ಗೋಳ್ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ನೇಚರ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಪ್ರಿವೇಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ Uh, in the uh, Brahma Samhita, it is said that uh, all of, from Indra all the way down to the smallest insect, Indra Gopa germ, there is fear. Even those in the higher heavenly realms, they fear losing their position. They fear the demons will attack. There is fearfulness everywhere. And of course, Shakespeare said, Uh, you know there's the rub death come dead the the idea of death or the idea of dying causes people to become fearful and fear is all pervading particularly in today's world where we have this uh, situation going on where everyone is being given uh, a lot of big injections of fear from the media um uh, and unfortunately people believe what they hear and therefore they the uh, fear barometer just shoots up i see that in my travels i'm now presently in london and i've done some preaching here and i can see there is this element of fear even amongst the devotee community um there's no reason to be fearful because it says here um krishna is almighty and especially the cause of fearlessness for the devotee there's always reasons to be fearful if it's not one thing it's another um sometimes that fear is in, takes the form of a, just uh some little incident where one is afraid of losing some possession afraid of not getting something in other words anxiety and fear are somewhat pervasive on all what we say levels of existence it's there it's strong but then there is abayam abayam is uh, fearlessness shila prabhupad's given name at the time of birth was abai abai means without fear and prabhupad said i have no i have no fear because he knows that krishna is there and this is this is the understanding that there are so many reasons to become fearful but if we always abide in krishna take shelter of krishna pray to krishna and live according to krishna's direction in life then for doing that there's no reason to have any kind of fear we can't control how the material energy works that is done by krishna he is he puts it in motion and he also controls it once it's going through his different agencies maya dakshayana prakriti suyate sachuracharam hetuna inakunteya tigabhi bharvi partante that this material world is working under my direction and so everything is happening under the either the direct or the indirect uh, hand of the lord indirect means that he does it through the material energy direct means he does it for his devotees wherein he is giving direct care protection shelter to his devotees for the non devotees Uh, the, the, because they don't accept his shelter they're always in fear and therefore the whole material world is just bayam fearful and now we have a situation where fear has raised its its head in such a way um and not even no reason to become fearful 
I'm hearing incidents amongst devotees where even the slightest little incident has caused people to become fearful towards each other and towards um, just towards life in general. But the Lord he knows, Rake Krishna Moreke Mori Krishna Rakeke. If Krishna wants to destroy someone, there's no way that person can be protected, no, no matter what they do. They cannot save themselves from the desire of the Lord, but if the Lord wants to protect one, and he does when it comes to the devotees, then nothing can hurt that devotee. And there, there are many examples of that in our Krishna conscious movement, where simply by taking shelter of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, or just thinking about Krishna in the, within the mind and heart, uh, a situation has completely turned around. Not only does he protect one from the element of fear, but he also uh, controls the material energy in such a way that the devotee is no longer placed in the, in the dangerous position. But that requires faith, a lot of faith on that. Uh, samsada dava nalidha loka tarnaya karna gana gana tvam patasya kalyana gunarna vasya dande guru shri charanadam uh, gunar gana 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 uh, that means there's a very dava dava means forest fire gana gana refers to the cloud comes to put out the forest fire so that forest fire is the material world, uh, birth, death, disease, old age, miseries of the mind, body, miseries coming from other living entities, miseries coming from the demigods, higher powers. There are so many difficulties in this world placed upon the living entity simply by being in this world. But a devotee knows that uh, Krishna is there. And Krishna may protect the body, or he may not protect the body, but he does protect the soul, for sure. Uh, generally, he also protects the devotee's body, too. But there are situations where it appears that the Lord forgot his devotee or didn't protect it as devotee. Now, he has another reason for allowing material energy to work in such a way that it appears to give trouble and uh, maybe even death to his devotee. But if a devotee has complete faith in the Lord, they know that everything is happening under his either permissive will or his direct will. Permissive will means sometimes he allows things to happen because he gives credence to the material energy and, that, and then the devotee learns something or gains something through his experience. So here, uh, it says even the su Supreme Personality of Godhead's um, personal associate, Arjuna, is feeling fearfulness. The Brahmastra Ribbon, Prabhupada said, is, is comparable to the modern day nuclear weapon, but it's better designed. The nuclear weapon is thrown and it just goes and it can destroy whatever it hits. But the Brahmastra can focus on a target and be guided by mantras towards that target and will hit only that target and nothing else. These are superior, what we say, subtle weapons that are inspired by mantras. The Kshatriyas in those days, many of them, not, not all of them, could fight by mantras simply by chanting purely certain mantras. They could, uh, you know, create weapons or even protect themselves. We have the example of Parasaram when uh, Karna, uh, the famous Karna, came to Parasaram to learn military art. Paras, Parasaram said he would never never ever 
uh, instruct the Kshatriyas. So Karna presented himself in a different way. Uh, he was born in the Sudra family. And so he came. No, he was not born in the Sudra family. Actually, he was born in, he was the son of uh, Kunti. So he was actually a Kshatri. But he hid his Satri identity from Parasaram, so Parasaram would, would instruct him. But then Parasaram, through a series of incidents, uh, found out that uh, Karna was a Kshatri and he had lied to him. So therefore he cursed him. He said, when you need that mantra, the, the, best, the most time when you're in the most danger and you need that mantra to bring about the weapons of defense, you will forget the mantra. And so when he was on the battlefield and uh, he was knocked off his chariot by Arjun, uh, he couldn't remember the mantra. And then he simply asked Arjuna, you know, you know, I'm unarmed now, so please stop the fighting. But Krishna had another plan because Karna had uh, insulted Draupadi in the assembly of the Kurus and ridiculed a chaste lady. That offense was equal to death. So when he asked the Arjuna to stop the fighting so he could fix his chariot, his chariot wheel got stuck in the mud. Uh, Krishna said no to Arjuna, just kill him now. And he did. And that was a surprise for Karna when he was being killed. He, he couldn't believe that was happening. But that was his destiny because first he insulted Draupadi and second, he lied to his spiritual master. So he was a he was an offender in so many different ways, and therefore he wasn't given the protection that a normal kshatriya would have been given in the case, in his situation. So mantras were used for protection and for uh, bringing about weaponry weaponry that was very powerful. So now Asvatama, he's no longer, he's considered a Brahma Bandhu, either a friend of a Brahman or a son of a Brahman. Although he's born in a Brahman family, he has lost all his Brahminical qualities. He's acting as a Kshatriya, but even then he's not following Kshatriya codes. So now he wants to kill Arjuna, who's chasing after him, so he fires this Brahmastra weapon. And then later on, you'll see what will happen. I don't want to reveal the whole text, but it becomes an interesting uh, clash between these two. So, um, fearlessness is something that we have to practice. When we know nothing can happen to us without the will of the Lord, then we can become free from all forms of fear. As Prabhupada said himself, fear means two. It refers to the number two, which means that there is only one, that's Krishna and Krishna's energies. So Krishna and Krishna's energies are non-different, therefore there's no such thing as two, there's only one. But um, let's see. But one who sees something outside of Krishna is seeing wrongly because there's nothing outside of Krishna. So nothing can happen without the sanction of Krishna. He may not instigate it, but he may allow it to happen. Okay, these are some 
characteristics of the fear. There are many more stories. Prabhupada tells his own story where he uh, was in, this was during World War II, in uh, the British quarter in India, Calcutta, when the bombs were coming and uh, the sirens went off and his friend had been to be with him in his house. His wife was cooking the evening meals. He was making some kachuris, which were Prabhupada's favor. When the bomb sirens came off, it was time to run to the shelters. But our Prabhupada said, no, he's going to stay there and accept a meal from his wife. And his friend immediately left. And Prabhupada later explains, he said, I, I was seeing the bombs coming. I was thinking, this is Krishna, the form of a bomb. So he was seeing Krishna in the form of a bomb. And therefore, there was no fear. There's no fear. Honey, can I ask Maharaj a question? Yeah, please. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. This is Bhakti. Please accept Muhammad Bhakti and all glories to you. So, you, in, in connection with Krishna, you said to the Prabhupada, said, there's one, there can't be two. Right. And you you explain the one as Krishna and Krishna's energies all in one. And someone that's fearful then is outside of that one. But they made up that one themselves, in that case, being fearful. So, yeah. so it seems obvious to me, but I'd rather ask you, the that fear from that person, is that the number two then? Yeah. Because Prabhupada right. said, fear, yeah, Prabhupada said, fear means two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fear means two. But there is a thing, this is not off the subject, but it's related to what you said. There is a devotee can have healthy fear, and that is the fear of, again, falling into the material energy. So that, that causes the devotee to be careful in the execution of their devotional service. But that is, that is a healthy fear because it allows one to be aware that one can be victimized by material energy and, do, and take precautionary measures. But ultimately, there is only Krishna and Krishna's energy, and therefore nothing happens outside of that. Thank you, Mary. Okay, I hope that was okay. Yeah. Maharaj, would you like to open up for questions, Maharaj, or would you like to continue sharing more about this topic? Uh, I think I'd like to open it up for questions. Okay. If there that's, are any... That's a, that's I'm okay. sorry, Maharaj. Is that okay? Maharaj, please, it's your call, Maharaj. Whatever you want, Maharaj. Uh, all right. Maybe through the discussion, we can in continue on, but... Um, I could speak more about fear if that's what I think I said the things that are essential um, that can be the foundation for understanding the topic in general. Now, I can also say one thing about fear that I that hasn't been said. The more one is attached to the material world, the more fearful one becomes. To withdraw the mood of fear or to reduce the mood of fear means to reduce one's attachment to the material world. 
those who have no attachment to the material world are completely fearless or approaching complete fearless. Um, that's why the non-devotees are very fearful because they live according to the principle of uncertainty and uncertainty brings fear uh, that what will happen well the devotees think yeah i'm with krishna and whatever happens will happen <laughs> but the non-devotee doesn't think like that he thinks oh my god what will happen or what won't happen they're always thinking you'll see how fear works in such a a uh, in a, uh, a what's the word uh, silly way people are in a, you're sitting in your room and it's nighttime and then the lights go out the power falls and all of a sudden you get scared you're in the same room nothing's changed the light, the only thing's changed is there's you can't see anything anymore because of the lights are not there and there is a fear element that comes and then people sometimes imagine something is happening in the room where it doesn't that's the nature of the mind and how it, that fear aspect causes one to think think in a most ridiculous way but there are fear is such a prominent thing that there are there are people who are feared of fear of all kinds of things like people there's people who are fear fearful of frogs now, why would you be fearful of frogs but that is there is there is a fear of frogs the fear of so many things there's fear of wind chimes you know those chimes that blow when the wind blows and makes the sound there are people when they hear that they become fearful fearful of, of cockroaches snakes are obvious that's an obvious fear yeah so many fears Hmm. mouse fear of your husband fear of your wife <laughs> you can you can take it all the way spiders that's that's there's a phobia attached to that chimps there's so many fears yeah lions tigers uh, government officials fear of police so many things fear i won't get this job fear i'll be fired from my job no yeah, that's the ultimate fear of death which is which doesn't really exist anyway death is for not for the the soul doesn't die the soul is eternal the body comes and goes when it comes it's called birth when it goes it's called death but for the soul there is neither birth nor death hi krishna my can i make a comment on something that you mentioned which is pretty ironic but you said it too you know in, in part in passing your speech you said that um, devotees are not fearful of death necessarily, right? because the body is destroyed, but the soul is not destroyed, and we know with the soul. But a non devotee, when the death is coming, they may be atheistic, and they're the first one that will say, Oh my God. This has been said so many times. The person that doesn't believe in God says, Oh my God, this is going to happen to me for the first time. The soul is calling out to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't yeah. know what they're talking about. Hare Krishna. This one. Yeah, because the God principle is there within everyone. God is in the heart. So you can blot him out, but that doesn't mean he's gone. And when one gets in a fearful situation, and then there's nothing to turn to. There's nobody that can give them shelter or some kind of pacification. 
And then this principle of God seems to arise from the unconscious. Because, you know, as they say, there's no atheist in the foxholes. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not, it's, that's almost a natural reaction. Spontaneous. Mm. Yeah, spontaneous, but because everyone is part of God, we're, we're connected to God. I, um, I, have a, I know a, a person who was practicing Hare Krishna for so many years and then gave it up and then for many many years didn't do anything in the devotional service and then this person was walking down the street where where they live and there was one dog that was, she didn't see and the dog barked real loud and scared her and then she said Hare Krishna <laughs> and she told me the story afterwards and she said, oh my God, I surprised myself. I didn't know, you know, it was such a part of me that when after giving it up, not practicing it for so many years away from the association of devotees, a situation came where there was some fear and immediately the chanting was there. <laughs> Yeah, so that's good. That's good, because that helps us to come back to where we're supposed to be, under the under the shelter of Krishna. So you'll find for devotees sometimes, many times, the devote the Lord will create a situation which causes the devotee to to react in a fearful way and eventually take shelter of the Lord, and that's good. gets them back where they should be. <laughs> Maharaj, when you mentioned um, in, in, in earlier part in the class that you have seen since you've been tr started to travel that there is a good amount of fear or some amount of fear in the devotee community. And at the same time here, um, you know, uh, devotees are preaching to be fearless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How can we because i see it here too you know when when everything is going smooth and well then it's easy to preach about being fearless but because of covid and whatever then there's so much fear that we don't recognize that we are being fearful because i you know some i i, I think and i may be wrong but i think there's a fine line between fear and caution so how can, as devotees, March, how can we be aware that we are actually? Yeah, I, we spoke, I spoke about that, about being healthy fear of material energy. So one has to be aware that the material energy can trap one at any time and try to live in such a way as to always take shelter of Krishna and not be and victimized by the material energy but you're talking about something in relationship to the body so something that may damage one's health so what do we do normally we always take care to make sure we keep our health that's a daily thing we do sometimes more sometimes less so why why uh not continue in that in all aspects and take caution you know, if you go out, if you go out with a cold, uh, without the proper clothes on in a in cold and damp weather, you can expect to get some kind of sickness. That will happen. So we know. So in the same time, if you're looking towards the present situation, you take precautions. That's all. And you also take also taking precaution means to, um, you know do things that will keep your health strong. So even if you do become outside of the proper behavior or etiquette, you're not so much affected by that. Mm. And Prabhupada also said that as a principle, and we know that this is just the principle of life. We take care of our health. You have to, the older you get, the more that becomes a concern also. Thank you, Maharaj. 
Shri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Uh, give me one minute. Uh, Shri Devi, I'll be right back. I just got to do one little thing. Yes, of course, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for this beautiful lecture uh, explaining how devotee is fearless by taking shelter of Krishna. So as devotees, we understand Krishna is there. He's always ready to give protection to his devotees. And we are not so scared about what's happening in the world. But other people who don't know Krishna, who don't understand the protection offered by Krishna, they don't know that. So how do we deal with neighbors or people who know us who are aghast that um, we have not taken vaccination and they start encouraging us, get vaccinated, get vaccinated. The Delta variant is coming and is deadly and this and that. Do we take this as an opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness? Or yeah. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people like to share their fears with you. And therefore you can share Krishna consciousness with them. Jai! <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's wonderful to hear. What, what else can you say? There's nothing else. Because anything material doesn't make sense anyway. <laughs> There's no protection outside of Krishna. No one can protect themselves. They can think that they can protect themselves, but they can't. Marge, I was reminded as you were speaking, Marge, uh, uh, about um, in, uh, that we have to remind ourselves about Krishna. I was remembering a, an incident that happened between both my children when they were little. And that we were, at the time, we were living in Gita Nagri. And um, there was this really, really bad heavy rains and storms. And we thought it, it was a tornado passing by, whatever. And we went to the basement. And I remember uh, one of my girls telling the other, you know, Vrinda telling Vishaka, Vishaka telling Vrinda, something like that. Oh, I think there's, um, they, they said something like, I think Lord Indra is angry with Lord Vayu. That's why it's so much heavy rain. So something like that. But Marjorie, what I've seen is, you know, kids have that 
innocence of seeing you know this like okay it's something higher but as we get older somehow the fear aspect materially comes in our minds how can we go back to being you know more aware maharaj that krishna is there <laughs> <laughs> because the kids have it so naturally at the young age they remind us you know well you might also say because that childlike innocence is also uh, there's an element of ignorance there also <laughs> They don't know the they don't know much about it nor the gravity of the whole thing but when you grow up you learn more about how the world works and what's happening and you also have more of a you know what we say a consciousness of of uh you know more body there might be more body consciousness due to one's material situation in the sense that, um, well, we know we've been through other experiences and this, therefore we know we have to be more cautious or take, or take precaution either one. Innocence, well, the innocence is based on so, you know, not knowing much about the situation as exhibited by that statement. <laughs> so, you know, but how can we overcome that? Well, there's only, it comes back to the same point. You know, Rake Krishna Mori K Mori Krishna Rake K. It takes faith to, to, uh, to come to the platform of complete shelter of the Lord. But then again, that's what we learn in Krishna consciousness. There's no where else you can place any of your faith or your desire for protection and other than the Lord. And that's one of the uh, uh, six uh, principles of surrender. Uh, there is six principles of surrender by Srila Sanatana Goswami from Hari Bhakti Vilas. And three of them are, is Krishna is my only protector, Krishna is my only provider, Krishna is my only uh, maintainer. Mm -hmm. These are three of the six principles. And the word only is emphasized that there's no protector, maintainer, provider outside of Krishna. But Krishna uses his energies to provide and to protect. But the energies are under his control and he, and he uses them accordingly, or he directs them accordingly. Hmm. So it takes faith to come to that platform and sometimes experience. We see so many devotees had so many experiences in life have been saved by difficult situations because they remembered Krishna in that difficult situation. Uh, I can think of three or four right off the top of my head, which are examples of devotees being in life-threatening situations. They simply remembered Krishna and the whole thing just turned around. So there's innumerable uh, incidents. And I think each and every devotee might have had some experience about that. As soon as you remember Krishna, the whole situation becomes different. And that works on all levels, not just for a fearful situation, but any situation. As you remember Krishna, you're with Krishna. Take shelter of Krishna. The intensity of how we take shelter is also um, the element of how much uh, we, we have faith in Krishna. Or if we're in a dire situation and there's nothing else and we really intensely take shelter of Krishna, then that's complete, that's perfect. But as we mentioned, sometimes Krishna doesn't protect the body, but he protects the soul completely. But that's a rare occasion. And these are specific occasions. 
where it appears that he doesn't give protection, but he's actually giving protection on another level. Unless you have that faith, you can't really, uh, you know, understand Krishna. He's perfect and he's all good. Whatever he does is perfect. Whatever he does is for the benefit of everyone. Unless we believe that, we're not really Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Are there other questions from devotees? Please do um, either raise your hand or you can jump right in. I'm looking down. This is a very nice topic, fear. Mm. Very nice topic. Marge, I, I have one more question, Marge, and if, if you have answered it, I may have missed it. Please do forgive me. Um, how can we distinguish or how can we um, um, personally self-awareness differentiate between healthy and unhealthy fear? Healthy fear is, you know, to act in such a way that then one doesn't become victimized by the material energy. And unhealthy fear means to act just act any way you want to act <laughs> and expect to be fearless, which is not unhealthy. Unhealthy fear is the regular fear that everybody experiences. Mm -hmm. the, world, the world is by um, it's full of fear. It's made that way. Yes, Sri Devi, please go ahead. And thank you, Anusuya. Um, I want to speak on these last three lines over here where Srila Prabhupada is very clearly telling us that the only way one can extinguish the fire of material existence is by the mercy of the spiritual master. It's the spiritual master who is the mercy representative of the Lord and one who's burning in the flames of material existence receive the rains of mercy through the transparent medium of the self-realized spiritual master. So this is really the key to, to getting the relief from the fire of material existence and uh, following the orders of the spiritual master, taking shelter of his words, his instructions, is uh, paramount, I think, in our spiritual life. So I just wanted to draw attention to this part of the purport. Thank you. Yeah, the spiritual master will, will, will guide you towards Krishna. That's the power of his words. He's bringing you to Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. And thank you, Sri Devi, for pointing, you know, for culminating the whole thing and bringing, in, you know, like, yeah, thank you. You, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, Prick should go ahead. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> this is a humble basis of God, Sri Prabhupada. I'd just like to piggyback on what uh, Sri Devi Mataji just said. When he finished and he mentioned the spiritual master and his importance in a devotee being able to go back to Godhead, then immediately hit me. Well, maybe that's why when the curtains are open in the morning in Mangala, I think, and we are looking at the deities, the first song is a song about the spiritual master, Sri Guru Ashtaka. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. so much, yeah, exactly. It connected with me like that, Hare Krishna. Yeah. I just wanted you to comment more about it because if you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that is one part of the prayer that uh, I remember my spiritual master three times a day. I offer my respectful obeisances, my spiritual master, th thrice in a day, morning, afternoon, evening. Mm -hmm. Spiritual master should be always connect. Always the devotee should always be conscious and aware that his spiritual masters 
instructions are the life soul is life soul mm -hmm. yeah Shri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma Bando Muhit Sarvadana Mate Yanhara Masare Bhai Bhava Turiyoyai Krishna Prapti Hoye Hanha Hoite The lotus feet of the spiritual master is the embodiment of pure devotional service. I bow down to those lotus feet with great awe and reverence. By his grace, one can cross the ocean of material suffering and obtain the mercy of Krishna, which means the shelter of Krishna. Guru Mukhapadva Vakya Chitete Koriya Oikya Arna Karina Mani As The words of my spiritual master are my foodstuffs, my nourishment. I don't need to go anywhere else. This keeps me, this is, this is my determined vow to always stay connected to my, the words of my spiritual master. They are perfect. There is no, nothing else that I need to hear. There's no one else I need to hear from. Uh, Guru Shri Guru Charane Rate Ese Uktamakati Shri Prasade Purva Sarva As that the, the words of the spiritual master, all of one's desires can be completely fulfilled perfectly eternally chakudan dilo ye janmi janmi prabhu se dibya gyan ridde prakasito he has opened my eyes with the torch light of knowledge therefore he is my lord birth after birth from him ecstatic prema emanates by him their ignorance is destroyed the vedic scriptures sing of his character uh he teaches me who I am. That's that Divya Gyan Ride. Divya Gyan means, Divya means transcendental, Gyan means knowledge. He gives transcendental knowledge. What is that transcendental knowledge? That you, you belong to Krishna. You are Krishna's part and parcel. You have no other identity and no other business. And, uh, and then the next line, uh, uh, prema bhakti ho ho hoite abhyasanas. He gives prema bhakti. He destroys all ignorance. The Vedic, the Vedic shastras glorify the bona fide spiritual master. Uh, what is that last one? Shri Guru Charane Shri Bando. Who is it? The last one. The last. Shri Guru uh, Karuna Sindhu Adama the, Janaraban. Yes, yeah, Sri Guru Karuna Sindhu, hmm. he's the compassionate ocean of mercy. Aramaj, he's the friend of all the living entities. Lokanath hmm. Lokira Jivan, so Naratam Das Thakur is glorifying Lokanath Das Goswami. So we say Prabhupada Lokira Jivan, Haha Prabhu Koro Doya Deham Mode Padachaya, Abhyas Gusik Tribu One. You are very merciful. You are the most merciful, but still I am begging for mercy. This when this is very instructive in this particular line. It teaches us that yes, he is mercy, but still we should beg for it. Not that, oh, he's merciful, it'll come, I'll just have to wait. No, we should beg for that mercy. Ha ha, Prabhu Koda Doya Deya Moda Padichaya. And then the glories of the spiritual master, Tribu, Tribu Van, they, they're being spread throughout the three worlds. There's no one is merciful, even in, even he's even more merciful than Krishna. Because he carries Krishna with him. This song, if we learn this song, then everything is there in that, that Sri Guru Vandanam prayer. And also Guru Vastakam prayer in the morning is is the activities of the spiritual master. And then we take shelter and learn what is our position in relationship to what he is giving us. These are the eight prayers that we sing in the morning. Well, Prabhupada wanted us to learn who were, we were not very intelligent in understanding what is the spiritual master, what is our relationship with the spiritual master. Therefore, he adopted this Guru Vandanam as a daily part of our morning program. Why? Because we needed it. 
not for his own glorification or so he could receive worship. He did it simply because knowing his Western disciples didn't know much. He wanted, he needed to teach that principle as foremost, and that is the guru disciple relationship. And so he adopted that guru vandanam, which was never done before. Usually you worship the guru once, and that is, I mean, in the formal way, that was on the appearance day of the spiritual master. That's the only time. But of course we used to, of course one can always worship the spiritual master at any time, but formally it's done on his Vyasa Puja day, but Prabhupada did it and he made it an everyday affair. He turned it into a, an opportunity for glorification and to learn our position Yeah, so the more we learn about the spiritual master, the more we can learn about Krishna. Guru's business is to give us Krishna, that's all. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Prakshad, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Um, in this last discussion about the importance and the special mercy by our Guru, <clears throat> it brings to mind the problems that some temples are going through with devotees, especially who were brought up in homes where they said they had guru, but actually they were focusing their lives more on connecting with the deity and the deity is Krishna. And I've asked this question before, but you, 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 you answered it in a mercy form, at least they're worshiping someone. But this is, Someone important. But this is, or what you explained here says, the importance of Guru, we have to inquire from Guru and have our lives uh, dealt with and straightened by Guru. We approach Guru, inquire submissively, render service. And as for the deity, Jesus says, what should mean? So why are people trying to get their information about how to lead their life from the deity and ignoring the guru? Some people are doing that and they're Islam devotees. Supposedly Islam devotees. And what do you do with people like that? Hare Krishna. Well, the idea is that there is this wrong mentality to think that I have a direct relationship with Krishna and that's true, but because I am covered by the material energy, I can't uncover myself, therefore I can't approach Krishna in my conditioned state. I need guides, I need, I need, I need, I need permission actually to, to, to uh, approach Krishna in the real sense of the term. So yeah, that mentality is due to the idea that, well, why have someone as a go-between when I have a direct relationship with Krishna? But Krishna tells us, if you have a direct relationship with him, he tells you how to access that. If you're ignoring Krishna's instructions and trying to worship Krishna at the same time, then you are, it's contradictory. Krishna says, if you want to approach me, do it through my spiritual master or my representative. He tells you the process. He sets the process in motion and then we, we think, well, you know, we ignore what Krishna says and we want to worship Krishna. It's, kind of, it's, it's, kind of, it's completely contradictory. And the mentality comes because one thinks that, um, you know, why have someone in between? I can have a direct relationship with Krishna. I don't need anyone to guide me or tell me and that's some kind of conditioning that comes with with wrong thinking that's all anybody who can help you with your relationship with krishna should be accepted and and appreciated whether it's your spiritual master or anybody what to speak of just a spiritual master anyone who's helping you in one sense is as good as your guru because your guru is coming through 
different personalities and different energies simply to guide you and, and elevate you. And when you see like that, then you can see the words of the spiritual master and everything. And then my spiritual master is teaching me through this situation. Mm. My, just another connection came as you said this last time. Because in the 11th Canto Shema Bhavatam, there's this talk of the Avadut Brahman. And he had 24 gurus. And some of them were not even in human bodies. Some of them were the sand, with the snake, or you name it. All the way up to even an insect, a wasp. He was right. taking shelter. Yeah. I just you know, brought it up. If we could comment more about it, it would be nice. Yeah, that's, that's a very powerful section of the Bhagavatam because it really teaches us that you can learn you can learn practical moral and spiritual principles through material energy and the, the features of material energy when you're when you're looking for it or if you know what what to look for or how to look for it mm -hmm. thank you and you can also learn from each other you can also learn from interacting with each other, certain qualities that you don't have that you might need in order to progress, you can also experience that with interaction with other people who have those qualities. And then you can see how they apply it and you can also take advantage of that. Yeah, so a devotee, a devotee tries to learn in every situation. So then, if I could add this, sometimes some senior devotees have so much to give junior devotees, but sometimes because a senior devotee may make one thing that's wrong, the junior devotee says, oh, you know, maybe it's like throwing the baby with the bathwater. Oh, the senior devotee, well, he made this, they focus on only the mistake. And now so much help that they can get from that senior devotee is gone. Yeah. No, that's, un right? for, yeah that, that's unfortunate, yeah. It's been happening, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, we're supposed to learn from our mistakes. To make a mistake is natural, but to, to learn from it is, is uh, human. Learning from the mistakes and not keep making the same mistakes. Thank you, man. Take the whole thing. Okay. Thank you, Maraj. Okay. If Maraj, I'm going to just ask if there are other questions from devotees and if there are any clarification that anyone has. I'm just going to go down the list. Um, Marge, I know that you definitely look like you're tired. I don't want to push you, Marge. <laughs> I feel so, every time I ask this question, I cringe. I have to confess, Marge. And I, <laughs> would you like to end the class, Marge, or would you like to do chant around? I feel really bad. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, as soon, as soon as I get off here, I have another engagement that I have to go to right away. Marge, then we'll just end the class. I'm not, I'm not going to force you, Marge. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm well, busy right now. I'm going to be busy between now and um, about 8 o'clock tonight. So if you, if you give me a break, it doesn't matter because I'm not getting a break anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, we'll give you a break, Marge. But I, I just would like to say, <laughs> because I know you're tired, I can tell, but Marge, I just want to say that we are really looking forward to your visit to Harrisburg. We miss your association so much, and I miss cooking for you. So I'm whenever planning, you... Planning, I have a plan to come to America. Oh, I'll make the, I'll make the bread. <laughs> yeah, I, have, bread I, have, I have one condition, though. Yes, Maraj. Pariksit has to make bread. I already <laughs> <He> promised. Said... <laughs> so we got Maraj. Uh, 
Yes, Marsh, no problem, Marsh. Anytime, you just got to just tell me. And Mother Gita said to please come to Atlanta. Uh -oh. So, Marsh, you got a long list. <laughs> it's, it's getting a little spiritually political here. <laughs> I'm in London now, and it's like, you know, nobody's coming here, nobody's preaching. So, it's like, so you can imagine what's going on. Marge, I can definitely imagine because we have a similar situation here, but we'll try to do magic with your potency, Marge. We'll try magic, to do magic. Magic is to hide me. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, thank you so much for your time. I know you have to run and we thank all the devotees for joining us. Patita nam pavane vyo Vaishnavebyo namo namaha Shri Prabhupada ki jai.